Hare Krishna. Welcome everybody for the evening 6 to 7 p.m. Bhagavad Gita session. Before we begin, let us offer our prayers to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Vaschatya Deshatarine Aya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Shri Radha Vrindavan Chandra Ki Jai Shri Shri Nitai Gauranda Ki Jai Shri La Prabhu Padi Ki Jai Shri Mad Bhagavad Ki Da Ki Jai Nitai Gauru Premanandu so welcome again for our evening Bhagavad Gita satsang discussions. We have been studying chapter 17 and covered almost 25 verses, studied almost 25 verses. We are left with three more verses in this chapter, which we are going to understand today. <clears throat> so in the last session, we were discussing on Krishna mentioning about the three syllables which are found in the Vedic literatures known as Om, Tat, Sat. And these uh, three syllables actually indicate the absolute truth, the supreme personality of God. Om, Tat, Sat. Right? Om is actually the sound representation of Krishna and all the transcendentalists, all the spiritualists, all the different <clears throat> great sages and devatas who undertake different types of yajna dana tapakriyaha. That is different types of sacrifices, different types of charities, different types of austerities. They all begin their activities by chanting the syllable Om. And Omkara is the sound representation of Krishna. When you have Omkara added with all the different Vedic mantras, it indicates that the ultimate objective is Krishna. Like even though the sacrifice may be for satisfying some devatas because the performer himself may not know the purpose of uh, the sacrifice as ultimately the beneficiary is Lord Krishna. But somehow, indirectly, he will gradually, step by step, reach that stage. That is the purpose. So, all the different uh, various rituals, activities, sacrifices, you know, austerities in the Vedic uh, culture uh, have been uh, added with the transcendental syllable Om uh, to attain the Supreme. Because attaining the Supreme is the perfection of life. Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam. And it is a nice statement is there in the Vedas. It is said, Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam. That Vishnu who is uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, attaining his shelter is the topmost perfection of life. This is what the Vedic scriptures point out. Likewise, <clears throat> the uh, syllable Om Tat Sat. Tat, the second syllable called Tat, uh, is meant to, uh, even this word is utilized or used, uh, or rather with the purpose of uh, satisfying the Supreme, all the activity should be done. Right? Because what is the intention? What is the purpose? Right? Any activity, when you do, uh, if the purpose of this of those activities uh, should be to get yourself free from material bondage that is the whole purpose it's like in the beginning of third chapter we have understood yagnarthat karmano nyatra lokoyam karma bandhanam tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara any activity which is done as a sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise they cause material bondage Krishna very clearly mentioned in the third chapter. So activity is done for Krishna's satisfaction, Krishna's pleasure. That is how the whole world is designed. 
so if you do activities otherwise they will cause bondage bondage meaning we get entangled in our activities and we continue our material existence continued material existence means repeated birth and death taking different types of bodies amongst 84 lakh species of life so uh, this is the risk which is involved in doing activities without following uh, the vedic injunctions or just doing it whimsically or doing it for one's own gratification right so the syllable tat basically means uh, tatva masi means the purpose should be to get ourselves relieved from this material entanglement which we have been going through from time immemorial anadi karma phale padi bhavarnav jale one of our acharyas shila bhakti vinod thakur he mentions that when we have fallen into this material ocean of repeated cycle of birth and death we also don't know we cannot trace back but the human form of life is supposed to uh, understand that we have somehow fallen in this world of this ocean of cycle of birth and death and get get out of this cycle of birth and death that is the purpose anadi karma phale padi bhava namajale na kori deka upay right we are all struggling all of us in the material world are struggling in the material world uh, with our uh, different bodies we are getting life after life going through different miseries so human form of life is that loophole to understand that uh, this you know this opportunity is there that we can come out right so we have to perform our activities for uh, this purpose this you know, is meant for satisfaction of krishna right om means attaining the supreme that is the first goal second is tat means we have to perform our activities the purpose that we don't get entangled in this world rather our whole purpose should be how to come out of this entanglement entanglement in this material world that is the whole purpose right so we'll move forward with our next this uh, next uh, verses verse number 26 and 27 This verse twenty six and twenty seven. Sadhave sadhave cha saditi etat prayujjate prachaste karmani katha sachchabda partha yujjate yagne tapasi dani cha stiti hi sad iti chochchate karma chayi vatad arthiyam saditi eva vidhiyate. Translation by Shri Lopal. the absolute truth is the objective of devotional service and it is indicated by the word sat these works of sacrifice of penance and of charity true to the absolute nature are performed to please the supreme person o son of tatha try to understand this more nicely so this is a uh, uh, the last syllable of om tat sat and o means supreme lord the, uh, the sound representation of krishna that means the purpose of our life should be to come out of this material entanglement and go back to spiritual world transfer to spiritual world tatva masi i belong to spiritual world i should go back to spiritual world that's what it means tat means sat means what you very nicely krishna is explaining in this verse what does sat mean he is telling sad bhave sadhu bhave sadbhave sadbhave cha right sadbhave means in the sense of the nature of the supreme sadbhave uh, means in the nature of the sense of devotion the sat means actually uh, eternal eternal existence shashvat astitva right in hindi so sadbhave sadbhave cha Sadhiti etat prayujyate. It's like the word Satchidananda. In the Satchidananda, we find the words. First word is Sat. Right? Sat basically means the eternal, permanent, ever-existing. No? Uh, not that it is destroyed; it is always existing. That is the meaning. Sat. 
supreme right so uh, here basically krishna is very nicely explaining this word chaling uh, prashaste karmani tatha sat shabda partha yujyate so this tat shabda sound of sat is used in a bona fide way to indicate the absolute truth or in, to indicate the objective of devotional service right the absolute truth sat uh, is the objective of devotional service right is indicated by the word sat and krishna further says that yagne tapasi dane cha same like we have understood in the previous verses yagna dana tapakriya in similar way so the, all the works of sacrifice yagna dana charity and tapasa penance uh, were actually of uh, were actually they are actually meant for our uh, helping uh, promote ourselves the spiritual nature spiritual world they are meant to be performed to please the supreme personality of god right? right so in that way uh, the, the actual objective uh, of the performer uh, of the different sacrifices is the devotional service uh, to reach the supreme destination uh, sachidananda jagat sanatana jagat right that is the purpose so we'll understand more nicely in purpa sila purpa explains nicely the purpa again right the the words Uh, prashaste karmani is used in this purport uh, mm-hmm. which means actually there are some prescribed duties right there are some prescribed duties for every uh, varna and ashrama right so these prescribed duties is like arjuna's prescribed duty was fighting as a kshatriya so every varna and ashrama has some prescribed duties given to different <clears throat> Uh, different people, as per their guna karma, right? Chatur varnya maya system guna karma vibhasha, right? So uh, these types of prescribed duties in the Vedic culture are uh, are are assigned to the different types of people based on their natures. Uh, nature means different types of influences of modes of nature they are going through, and the different type of you know, karmic influences they have because of which they. they show some inclination of particular type of work right it doesn't mean that a kshatriya's son will become a king only no if he is showing inclination of doing business trade agriculture then he will he will be taking up the profession of a vaishya or a shudra son is showing the all the you know symptoms of uh, being a ruler he will be given the position of a ruler that is the way the vedic culture was uh, designed but there is a nice statement in the bhagavata Where in Narada Muni, uh, very nicely he explains, "Yesya lal yel lakshanam proktam pumso varnavi venjakam." Whatever type of symptoms we see in a particular person, symptoms with regard to different types of natures and different types of inclination of work, accordingly the person should be uh, classified belong to that particular varna na shama. It is the definition Narada Muni gives. so like this vedic culture vedic literature vedic uh, uh, culture vedic civilization was very scientific it was not that just because i am born in a particular family so i will be that per- i am i am you know i am that person by birth no prachila prabhupada often gives the example if your father is you know if your parents are uh, doctors doesn't mean you also become you are also called doctor no you parents are doctors so there is a good facility for you to become doctor but you again have to go through school college medical college medical course internship then only you will be called a after proper certification we call it doctor you have to be qualified that's the point so in the vedic culture these different types of prescribed activities were all mentioned and uh, in the present system of kali yuga we cannot expect such uh, very distinctive ways of uh, identifying that this person belongs to this varna this ashrama no not easy because uh, the whole society is in one sense degraded from the vedic standards and they are not following any rules regulations so it is mentioned that mostly the kali yuga population is shudra population shudra population means uh, they don't know what is the 
actual purpose of life but they are just happy uh, you know doing some menial jobs and simple works working under somebody as subordinates right that is how the modern kaliyuga population is so for them the recommendation given in bhagavad gita by shri prabhupada is just follow the process of krishna consciousness and by following krishna consciousness process uh, anybody who is you know actually in the kaliyuga everybody in the shudra platform they'll all be elevated to the highest level of a vaishnava actually prabhupada personally demonstrated by you know when he when he went to the uh, western countries when he went to america in 1965 prabhupada so many you know the, the westerners there youth they were all so degraded in their uh, living standards and even from the ordinary point of even from the american standard of life they were degraded so much but bachilo prabhupada bachilo prabhupada introduced them with the bhakti process of chanting hare krishna right then uh, reading bhagavad gita leading a purified life of having only prasadam right many such activities were introduced by prabhupada where in these very uh, youth who are so degraded in their ways of uh, functioning they got very much elevated right so they got so much elevated that uh, they they uh, uh, they were you know they, they were like vaishnavas shri prabhupada when he brought them to india all the indians were very surprised stunned how nicely the you know whole population has got elevated themselves how nicely this you know these westerners americans have become so nice vaishnavas that is the point so any prescribed duties hmm, either in the vedic system or in the present system as shri prabhupada has given us they are meant for purification right we are in a particular status of our human status human life now so they are supposed to be elevating our consciousness from a gross uh, sensual platform to spiritual understanding so in the vedic culture this uh, uh, this particular aspect was taken care from the very birth now we have discussed this you know in the beginning of uh, 16th chapter how there are dasha vidha samskara right starting from the birth of the child hmm, the parents are supposed to plan uh, the child which is supposed to be born Uh, how to give spiritual culture to the child even before birth and both are supposed to have a proper spiritual consciousness then they unite that is called as and then they, the father places the you know, seed in the womb of the uh, uh, mother and then there is you know that is called garbhadhana samskara so like this step by step every stage of life there are different purificatory processes are commanded that is a step by step process which is is not very practical for this kali yuga So Shri Prabhupada says, just follow what uh, the, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us—the process of chanting Hare Krishna and following a purified life of avoiding four sinful activities, right? No meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. These four sinful activities you avoid. Lead a purified life with chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, have only Prasadam Krishna Prasadam. Read Bhagavad Gita. Then you are free from all type of. Uh, influences of sinful activities so basically any purificatory process either in the vedic system vedic culture of step by step process or the uh, the krishna conscious method of purification they are all ultimately meant for uh, liberation of the living entity right the living entity who is now entangled in the material world taking different types of bodies supposed to get liberated that is the whole purpose right so uh, in any, any such activities so all the activities should have the uh, the goal of supreme lord ultimate goal supreme lord om and the purpose should be to do see that our activities don't entangle us here and you uh, know uh, they we transfer ourselves to spiritual world because we belong to spiritual world and finally the objective of our activities that is sat Now our objective of activities should be that right, we purify our consciousness. Actually, we are Satchidananda. So Satchidananda nature has to be revived again. Uh, it is uh, right now sleeping. So by process of devotional service, by chanting the holy name Hare Krishna mantra, by reading Bhagavad Gita nicely in association of devotees, all these powerful processes will help us to revive our Satchidananda nature. That's the reason. Uh, uh, that we should vibrate om tat sat 
That is the recommendation which Krishna gives us here. And Hare Krishna mantra already has Om Tat Sat nonsense. So the specific words which are used in this verse, uh, Krishna uses in the beginning called Sad Bhave and Sadhu Bhave. They indicate <coughs> that uh, how we should uh, we should elevate ourselves to our transcendental situation. And you would have heard the word <coughs> Sat Sangha. Sadhu Sangha. Satsang. Satsang comes from this word Sat. Sat means eternal, permanent, uh, never, uh, never destroying, never destroyed. It is called eternal Sat, sat Shashwata, Astitya. So our existence is actually Sat. So any discussion which will help us to move towards Sat, that is called Satsanga or Sadhu Sangha. Right. Asatoma Sadgamaya. With, with the scriptures also give us the statement. We have to move from this temporary uh, non, uh, non-existent material world. Right? This is actually this world is temporary, asat. It doesn't have a you know, permanent permanent existence. For, for short duration, it is there. Again, it is destroyed, again it is created. This is how it is. So this is asat loka. Right. So, whereas our existence as Atma is Sat, Krishna says, Najayate, Namriyate, Vakadachin. Atma will not um, take birth, Atma will not die, Atma's existence is eternal. Right? In that way, uh, the uh, words Sad Bhave, Sadhu Bhave, they indicate the Atma's transcendental situation. All of us as living entities are actually spirit souls. Our transcendental situation is to be in the Sat Jagat, Satchidananda Jagat, right? So one who is always acting in Krishna consciousness or Bhakti Yoga, right? He is actually on the Sat platform, right? And uh, uh, when one is fully conscious that I am part and parcel of Krishna, uh, I am eternally servant of Krishna, right? Then we have regained our original constitutional position, which is known as Swarupa. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jivera Swarupa Nityera Krishna Dasa. Our real situation, our real transcendental situation is what? Real Swarupa is that of being eternally servant of Krishna. This situation has been forgotten now. This situation has been replaced by different thinking that um, I, am, I am this body and as body I am uh, you know, I'm supposed to be part of this family, this society, this community, right? Uh, I have to serve this particular you know, group of family members, the society members, like this. Our uh, situation has you know, changed to Asat, which means all those different personalities whom we think as our people, they are not going to last for long. As long as the body is, your body is alive or their body is alive, you're going to have the relation with them. So, which means that is not our actual Sarupa. Again, once you leave this body or finish this life in this body, you're going to take one more body, which means your, your uh, identification changes. So, as spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna, actually our identification will never change. But because in the material world, we have been identifying ourselves with different bodies, material bodies, our uh, identification keeps changing life after life. Right? So all these subject matters of you know, that I am this body, I'm not this body, I'm spirit soul, I'm my, my, my body is you know actually just a temporary situation, circumstantial situation. My real situation is you know, spiritual, uh, going back to spiritual world. My real situation is to be in association with Krishna, with all the different you know devotees in Goloka Pradnavan. All these subject matters are very confidential subject matters. They're all spiritual subject matters, which, you know, which will be revealed or which will be known, which will be, you know, rather uh, realized when we have been in association with devotees, right? So uh, just on our own, on our own strength, we cannot get this knowledge. It's like in the material world, we may think, oh, I want to understand about some particular subject. Let me purchase some books and understand it. Spiritual subject matter, the secret, 
behind understanding the spiritual subject matter or knowledge of spiritual spiritual science has to be uh, revealed by uh, guru's mercy guru krishna's mercy guru krishna kripaay pai bhakti lata bija this is what ketane ketane mahaprabhu says actually when uh, we have uh, surrender to a bona fide spiritual master like shila prabhupad and with a very humble mood want to serve him serve him means whatever instruction shila prabhupad is giving us we want to follow strictly in our life and in the mood of uh, humility any such you know clarifications are there we ask other devotees who are following and shila prabhupad said just read my books all your questions will be answered right so like this when you start following what shila prabhupad has told us and you are in the association of devotees just like we are having this satsang uh, program we have been conducting and now that you know we have reached almost 17 chapters end of 17 chapter how day after day day after day uh, we began when the you know <clears throat> pandemic started the month of march now we have you know in the month of uh, october we are almost covered seven up to 17 chapter maybe another one month we'll complete the you know, entire bhagavad gita so in the association of devotees matter will be very clear so this is what exactly shila prabhupada also explains in the very beginning of bhagavad gita the very first verse you know, prabhupada uh, makes a, you know the statement in the purport first verse dharma kshetre kuru kshetre prabhupada says <clears throat> that bhagavad gita uh, should be read very scrutinizingly it is what gita mahatmya says for purporting hmm? bhagavad gita should be read very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who is a devotee of shri krishna and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretations this is a this is the way we are supposed to understand bhagavad gita so we should always value the uh, sadhu sangha or satsang association of devotees right the association of devotees is very powerful very potent even a moments association can transform our lives the nice statement in the chetan charitamrita it said ha sadhu sang sadhu sang sadhu sang sarva shastra kahe lava matra sadhu sang sarva siddhi hoy association of pure devotees na uh, association of pure devotees this is what all these shastras you know give stress on because even a moments association lava matra sadhu sangha it is going to bring you all perfection of your life because mostly people are going through or going on in their life with some particular conception of life they are going on you know in one type of a thinking one type of a working one type of acting now without understanding the purpose of life the goal of life as we have been discussing here what i should do how the work activity should be performed what is the final goal in my life what is the objective of my life this is what we are discussing here all this is lacking but all this will be revealed with a moments association of pure devotee just like shila prabhupada when he went to america his association was so powerful that the you know even the most degraded people they got transformed they got elevated as very good vaishnavas this is the point so we should always seek for good association association basically means in terms of uh, you know uh, hearing from other devotees who are uh, who are you know, who are mature enough to un- uh, give the understanding of the scriptures or give the understanding whatever shila prabhupada has told us same thing is told in a very simplified way for us to understand we should seek their association seek their company just like the in our common exp- our no- normal experience has been that we would like to have friendship with people of us uh, uh, of you know, where in our interests are all having similarity right so similarly prabhupada says uh, the hare krishna movement or international society for krishna consciousness is con is made to create an opportunity for like minded people who want to advance in krishna consciousness so we should always see uh, see that we keep association of devotees and nowadays through you know the modern gadgets it is even more simplified 
people use the social media other things to keep in contact keep in association but as devotees we can also use the same uh, social media platforms to keep devotee association that's the point right so in that way uh, to keep constant association or seek for a constant devotee association satsanga is something which all of us as individuals should be striving for shri prabhupa says in one more context is that you now we should be hankering for devotee association because otherwise what happens maya is ready to give our association in different ways right maya is always dictating from within ha ah, you enjoy your eyes like this you enjoy your tongue like this you enjoy your ears like this maya has 101 directions to be given every second but overcoming those directions and dictations from maya and trying to uh, have keep devotee association means it is an endeavor from the individual practitioner of krishna consciousness each sadhaka has to strive because initially it will be difficult maya also will see you know how strong you are because maya's activity is what she will always try to pull you down she will cover your real knowledge of krishna consciousness and whenever you want to escape from her clutches she would like to pull you down pull you down means she will try to keep her uh, inner association only by engaging in different maya's activities so for example early morning we have to get up every day so uh, recommendation is that we have to get up before uh, brahma mohurta that time only you know somehow we feel so sleepy alarm rings but you know we just snooze it out and then tell okay five minutes that five minutes will become one hour like this the opportunities for engagement in maya service or krishna service this strong determination decision has to be taken by us and this determination uh, for krishna service will become more obvious when we have strong devotee association just imagine at that time uh, in your family there's somebody who is also chanting hare krishna also wants to get up or your spouse uh, spouse she or he is then also ready getting ready he will just come and wake you up so nice right it's called association which means the family itself has become krishna conscious so nice that is the point so devotee association is always very potent so you know uh, the power of association with devotees is so you know wonderful uh, the scriptures say that it is beyond any comparison right that's why this uh, sat word satsanga you know, or the spiritual association or the eternal association of krishna is only possible when we have like minded devotees always coming together and discussing about krishna in fact this is one of the uh, you know uh, important instructions which krishna gives in 10th chapter right among the four important verses uh, important verses of bhagavad gita 10th chapter has two verses from verse number 8 9 10 11 right the uh, ninth verse krishna says machittas matgata prana bodhayanta paraspara कथयन्तश्च माम नित्यं तुष्यन्ति च रमन्ति च राइट सो कृष्णा सेस द थॉट्स ऑफ माय प्योर डिवोटीज ऑलवेज डिवेल इन मी देयर लाइफ्स आर सरेंडर्ड अनटु मी एंड दे डिराइव ग्रेट सैटिस्फैक्शन एंड ब्लिस एंड लाइटनिंग वन एंड अदर एंड कन्वर्सिंग अबाउट मी सी कृष्णा इज स्ट्रेसिंग ऑन द डिवोटी एसोसिएशन हियर राइट सो द ट्रांसेंडेंटल सब्जेक्ट मैटर्स एक्चुअली भगवत गीता भागवत ऑल ऑफ देम will you know will be the knowledge will be revealed by krishna in devotee association is a nice statement in the bhagavatam it is said satam prasangan amavirya samvida bhavanti hrutkarana rasayana katha the potency the, the uh, potency of uh, the transcendental message of krishna is very great and in association of devotees that potency enhances shila prabhu gives example of how when a potent man and a potent woman husband and wife they unite immediately there is pregnancy likewise when the uh, bhagavad gita bhagavatam teachings are all uh, discussed amongst devotees you know, they are all heard in the community of devotees then the most, the message will be very potent 
Satam Prasanga, Mavavirya Samvidaha. It will be so potent that immediately you start understanding subject matter very nicely. That is the point, which means the devotee association is very important aspect. Bhagavad Gita Krishna is stressing this point here, right? So uh, we need to sincerely seek for devotee association in whatever way possible, right? Either uh, social media or you know, we should always see that we seek association of devotees who are more advanced than us, who are more, uh, you know, uh, who are more experienced in, uh, in, in, in practicing Krishna consciousness, who, who can give you some guidance, that's the idea. Right? You're taking association of somebody who is much junior to you, then uh, you will not be you know, right, you know, uh, you'll not be getting any good association from that. Rather, you have to be giving association. It is one more different aspect. But as <clears throat> sadhakas, we should be aspiring for always uh, senior devotee association. Right? And there are so many wonderful Vaishnava bhajans which Acharyas have written. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Sanatam Das Thakur, uh, trying to hear them, understand them, Prabhupada has some, all of them. There are the different ways of Vaishnava association. Right? So in that way, <clears throat> It's very important, Sri Prabhupada makes a statement here that without this uh, you know, good Vaishnava association, devotee association, we cannot make progress in our uh, spiritual understanding. It's an important statement. Right? So, in that way, we can see <clears throat> uh, these words, syllables, Om Tat Sat has this significance. Krishna is concluding here that any Vedic ritual, any Vedic uh, you know, sacrifice, any Vedic austerities, performances, now, these Om Tat Sat, this syllable is uttered, which indicates the supreme objective, supreme goal of life. Right? So that the, this, you know, this particular supreme uh, goal and objective is invoked in the performance uh, consciousness. Right? It's invoked properly. Right? So that way Prabhupada says, by uttering this Om Tat Sat, in all the different uh, activities and offered to Krishna, those activities are made perfect in all ways, in all the, from all angles of vision. Otherwise, they'll be imperfect. Right? It's like Prabhupada gives the example of uh, zero on its own has no value. But the same zero, when there's one placed before zero, then that value only increases. So zero has become 10. One more zero I add now, it will become 100. So whatever activities we do will not have any relevance, any value. They are not complete unless the you know the syllables Om Tat Sat or Hare Krishna Mantra or the mood of offering of this any activities for the satisfaction of Krishna is not done. Everything should be done for Krishna's pleasure, Krishna's satisfaction, you know, with, with, with the goal that this activity will please the Supreme Lord. This activity will uh, you know, will purify my intentions to transfer me to spiritual world only and only objective of devotional you know, achievement this is the purpose right our activities will be perfect and complete by this mentality right so this is the the conclusion which krishna makes about uh, the different types of sacrifices and different uh, <clears throat> uh, various rituals right it has to be having the syllables om tat sat the vedic system in the modern way which is the hare krishna mantra just have Hare Krishna Mantra always chanting in any activity, that is going to be perfect. It's like, you know, in the one of the pastimes, in Vrindavan, the Krishna Valram Mandir, what happened on 1974, during Ram Navmi time, April. Srila Prabhupada said, just chanting Hare Krishna by your devotees, that is enough for all the, it's going to replace all the rituals. But just for the sake of, you know, some uh, temples in Vrindavan, they may criticize. So you can call some uh, smart brahmanas. Let them chant some Vedic mantras. So simultaneously, Prabhupada had made arrangement that <clears throat> some group of devotees are continuously doing Sankirtan. At one more place, some brahmins uh, are chanting some mantras. So Srila Prabhupada demonstrated practically how chanting Hare Krishna is more than enough. That is going to replace everything in our life. So we'll move to the next verse now, <clears throat> the last verse of this chapter. Verse number 28. Ashraddhaya hutam dattam tapas taptam kutam chayat asad iti ucchate partha 
न च तत्प्रेत्य नो हि हा ट्रांसलेशन वैशिल प्रोपाद बट सैक्रिफाइसेस ऑस्टेरिटीज एंड चैरिटीज परफॉर्म विदाउट फेथ इन द सुप्रीम आर नॉन परमानेंट पोषण ऑफ प्रथा रिगार्डलेस ऑफ व्हाट एवर राइट्स आर परफॉर्म दे आर कॉल्ड असत एंड आर यूजलेस बोथ इन दिस लाइफ एंड द नेक्स्ट नो कृष्ण इज सेलिंग and those sacrifices which are not performed with the rules regulations and with proper faith what is the uh, you know destination of uh, the performer right again krishna is concluding this chapter by telling this things because arjuna's question is what what about those people who don't uh, have faith in scriptures who don't follow scriptural regulations but on their own whimsical way in their own uh, you know concocted way they want to have their own base of worship ritual sacrifices what what is their destination that was the question so krishna is answering finally that the sacrifices or the austerities or the charities which is performed without proper faith faith in what faith in scriptures but they have their own concocted ways of performing now, uh, no faith in scriptures means no faith in krishna also they are faithless right, in the supreme and this performance krishna says they are non permanent me <clears throat> krishna is telling that they don't give any permanent results asad iti asad means it is you know like uh, temporary the results will be temporary asad iti uchchate partha uh, and uh, whatever type of concocted ways of perform performance of worship and different types of rituals you may be you may be performing but they are of no use they are useless both in this life and in the next nachat tat pretya no iha it will not be helpful either in this life or in the next life we find a similar statement in the fourth chapter krishna mentioning that those who doubt the scriptures samshaya atma krishna mentions about you no know, the doubting souls uh, those who don't those who doubt about the scriptural uh, recommendations krishna says they will not have happiness either in this life or the next krishna says agnyas cha shraddha dhanas cha samshayatma vinashyati nayam lokostina paro na sukham samshayatma uh, but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness for the doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor the next this is from fourth chapter 40th verse so like this we find krishna openly and very bluntly telling if you don't follow this what will happen to you like when in third chapter also krishna mentions if you don't perform the sacrifices cycle of sacrifices then you are doomed finished because krishna want to give a very you know clear understanding indication to the common man that there is no other option you have to follow You simply concoct things and think, or oh, this is also okay, that is also okay. No, it is not okay. Krishna is very strict in that manner. You see, right? So he wants to see that we don't deviate unnecessarily from our way of uh, human, uh, you know, uh, pur- purpose of life. That is the point. So here, in this specifically in this verse, <clears throat> Krishna is very clearly mentioning that everything should be done with the transcendental objective, as we have understood. Om Tat Sat. whatever it is sacrifice charity penance everything should have a transcendental objective if it is not having having a transcendental goal transcendental objective then it is useless because your objective will be something very temporary that krishna very clearly says in ninth chapter that the results from you know worshiping different devatas or different types of worships other than krishna worship is going to again bring you back to the, the continued uh, cycle of birth and death So Krishna is condemning such activities here, and such activities are abominable. He is declaring that these activities are abominable. Right? So everything should be done for Krishna. Yat karoshi, yat dashnashi, yat juhoshi, yat das yat. Everything should be done for Krishna in a proper Krishna consciousness uh, act, uh, mood, attitude, or background consciousness should have. Uh, this offering is for Krishna. this mood has to be cultivated cultured properly and all this will happen again in devotee association right so this faith uh, that this you know, everything should be done for krishna 
uh, and this strong commitment strong determination can come under uh, when it can come when we have a proper devotee association there is a proper guidance being given uh, in that association and uh, all the fruits krishna only has to enjoy so this looks like oh why only krishna somebody may try to object but point is after studying whole bhagavad gita right, everything is krishna's we are also krishna's our body is krishna's so krishna is the proprietor of everything so he is actually the enjoyer he is actually the proprietor he is actually the uh, the benefactor bhokta ram yajna tapasam right it is like you know if you start asking yourself oh why you know, this stomach has to be given all that food all the different you know organs eyes ears ears or hands start asking that is how it is the system is made in that way uh, the, the, the whole the, the whole arrangement is made in that way in the body that the different organs work and supply food to the stomach uh, from the stomach the food is digested and everywhere the energy goes so this point has to be understood this is what krishna is trying to explain in the old bhagavad gita that he is the root of all existences he is the cause and cause of all causes so if he is actually worshiped he is actually given all the devotion and automatically you will be satisfied and everybody will be satisfied right so this strong conviction strong faith uh, that krishna has to be worshiped has to be cultured and this culturing can happen with devotee association who already have developed such strong faith right? because faith propa says is contagious it's like you know nowadays we see you know we have to be carefully uh, avoid people who are having some virus infection because it may infect you because it's contagious likewise faith is also contagious strong faith in krishna anybody having strong faith in krishna you associate with them you will get that contamination it's not contamination it's a healthy way of you know you you are increasing your faith in krishna like so how shila prabhupada the strong faith in krishna he went and uh, influenced that faith amongst the youth in the western countries how they all got so much surcharged with energy to serve krishna right so the the purpose of all the vedic literatures vedic culture is to understand krishna the ultimate goal Uh, of all the vedic performances all the vedic rituals or the vedic study is krishna vedaishya sarvair aham eva vedya so this is what you know uh, we need to have a strong conviction right so if this conviction is lacking at least we should seek association we should keep seeking association of devotees who whose conviction on this aspect is very strong so that conviction is slowly is passed on to us that is the point right so Uh, day by day we should always see that how my conviction that krishna is supreme lord everything should be offered to krishna uh, we have to only dedicate our life to krishna these aspects becoming more and more uh, actual fact in our life uh, maybe some aspects are some statements are all theoretically there in my consciousness but gradually by devotee association by you know chanting hare krishna Uh, and then uh, gradually day by day this conviction should become more strong that is the whole point right so success purpose is no one can obtain success without this principle this principle of having a strong faith strong conviction of krishna everything should be done for krishna and nothing more because little inattention maya will take over that's the point mm? so <clears throat> when we perform our devotional activities very scrutinizingly very meticulously very carefully under the guidance of a expert spiritual master like shila prabhupada who has so wonderfully filled every moment of our life so nicely starting from the morning 4 o'clock uh, mangala aarti up to night 10:30 uh, you rest the lord and you also take rest so nicely given the whole schedule is given so wonderfully you need not speculate at all just we have to follow that's all and take guidance of those devotees already are doing this nicely step by step then our you uh, know we can attain success because attaining success in this human form of life is very important so the prophet says don't waste your life see that you perfect your life in this particular uh, life perfection means going back to god it should be done this life don't take chance so but that way he you know he he creates urgency but don't simply you know think that oh next life again i may get human life 
again you may get human life what will be the situation of kali yuga we don't know right when and which planet you don't know where you're going to get human life so all why you have to take risk now that we're in the golden pay, uh, uh, period chaitanya mahaprabhu's advent has happened just five years ago prabhupada has just come you know 50 years back he was here and you know so much wonderful leelas have happened then like this you know we just have to take full advantage of this and go back to spiritual life that is the whole purpose right otherwise we see in the conditioned state now people are all attracted to so many types of worship so like krishna was explaining in this chapter beginning of this chapter how people in the mode of uh, passion or goodness they may worship devatas in the mode of passion they worship some you know demons in the in the mode of ignorance tamoguna they worship some ghosts and yakshas right so um, actually people are under different modes of nature influenced by different modes of nature they always uh, oscillating from this mode to that mode to this mode to that mode but when you once you take to krishna consciousness or bhakti process directly as krishna says mam chayo abhyavi charena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samati yate tan brahma bhuya ya kalpate krishna conscious process is so wonderful that it will transcend you from all the modes immediately but only thing is you have to engage in the process of bhakti avyavi charini without fail or uh, without cessation or continuously every day daily that is the point uh, so uh, the the process is very perfect the performer or the sadhaka should very strictly adhere to the uh, the process that's the whole point right by by the association of you know uh, shila prabhupada and all the other devotees are practicing this and we also take up krishna consciousness nicely that is the best way for our progress in bhakti in this present age the, the, the process is very pakka very clear and uh, clear cut process is there success also is guaranteed provided you subject yourself to the process and you also follow the rules regulations as much as possible so from your side all the endeavor should be there this is what this chapter is recommending so if you don't follow what shila propar has given us you know in your practical life very practical you know you know practical life many practical instructions shila propar has given there are so many letters which propar has written with regard to every aspect of how to go forward in our spiritual life right very practical we just follow them strictly seriously success is assured this is what uh, in this chapter krishna want to tell us right because if you don't follow this you'll be under the influence of some modes because influence of modes means you'll be going through some other ways of rituals you know some types of austerities again it's not going to lead you to the ultimate perfection for some ulterior for some ulterior purpose or some material purpose some activities will be performed which is not at all you know ideal for our progress in krishna consciousness right so very clearly in this chapter krishna is indicating that if you want to have success in your spiritual life we need to find a, bo- a bona fide spiritual master and receive proper training under his direction tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina tattva darshana is what krishna mentions in fourth chapter very important instruction and we see even in 13th chapter krishna mentioning as one of the items of knowledge adho guru ashrayam krishna says right he says that uh, we have to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master acharyo hmm? pasanam we have to worship the uh, we have to approach as bona fide spiritual master which means this is an essential aspect in spiritual life that we approach a bona fide spiritual master shila prabhupada is that bona fide spiritual master who is so you know uh, wonderfully accessible to all of us in the modern context uh, he has written so many books he has established institution right just follow what krishna prabhupada has given us his inst- through his institution and through his books and his vani is available the recorded voice is available just hear them it is also going to give us in so much of enlightenment so many lectures are there every day hearing one lecture is very wonderful you think all of you are hearing already 
right? In Bhagavad Gita, almost every verse Prabhupada has given lecture. And after this, there is Bhagavata, again, a very big literature. Bhagavatam is a further explanation of what is there in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has only mentioned, stated some principles, right, in a very concise way. Bhagavatam elaborates those principles with examples, with uh, historical references. That is Bhagavatam. Prabhupada says, Bhagavad Gita is like ABCD, elementary school. Bhagavatam is like graduate study. There's one more literature called Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is called postgraduate study, further uh, you know, advanced uh, literature. So we need to understand all of them gradually, step by step. So which, which means we need to have a proper guidance, the bona fide spiritual master. And gradually what happens? Our conviction, our determination to you know, take up Krishna conscious process will increase, enhance. We want to do this, we want to do next step, we want to do, go forward in the next step, this is what happens gradually. Right? So we have one program called Srila Prabhupada Ashraya program. Uh, you can uh, contact our devotees, they will give you more details. Very soon we'll be having one <clears throat> such program wherein you can apply yourself you know, to the point of initiation, up to the point of initiation from Srila Prabhupada, step by step. When you're trained, we are trained, you're trained by, you know, by the organization, Vrindavan Chandodaya Mandir, step by step, that you can reach to the point of taking initiation from Srila Prabhupada. There are some four or five steps which we have to follow, right? Gradually, step by step, you follow this because finally the uh, Bhagavad Gita's recommendation is this. You approach a bona fide spiritual master, take proper guidance from him, and receive proper training from him and approach this and perfect your life. Right? Because finally the purpose of human life is what? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Premo Pumartho Mahan. We're supposed to develop uh, love for Krishna. Right now, our love for so many things you know, is uh, distributed for family, for my body, for my society. So many things I have love. Love means that context is attachment. But for attachment to Krishna should be for attachment should be for only for Krishna. That's what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Maya sakta manapartha. Maya sakta means uh, develop attachment for me, Krishna says. So all this is possible when we have followed the process of approaching a bona fide spiritual master, taking proper shelter and guidance step by step. So this uh, Prabhupada Ashraya program is a very, very wonderful program. I strongly recommend that all of you go through this process step by step. Mm -hmm. Right. So <clears throat> this is what this uh, 17th chapter is giving us the message that take up Krishna consciousness directly. Don't go through any other, uh, you know, concocted ways and means of worship and rituals, sacrifices. It's only going to divert your mind. Right? You have to simply follow what Krishna is telling in Bhagavad Gita. Right? Following Krishna's directions directly. Following Krishna's directions directly from Gita yeah, and following what Srila Prabhupada is telling is no, no different. Right? This is what this chapter is uh, telling, 17th chapter. With this, we conclude the 17th chapter of uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is. From next section onwards, we will take the last chapter of this literature, Bhagavad Gita as it is, 18th chapter. Okay. Anybody is anything to ask? Any discussions? Any comments? Okay. It looks like there are no, no questions, no comments. So thank you everybody for being part of the session. We will continue next Monday, uh, next Wednesday. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Srila Prabhupada.